Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely stop you at 10. Since so you're the only talk. So, hi, I'm Shadaj, and uh, I uh, really like Star. So, today I'll be showing my implementation. Think. That should, that should make you a bit more audible. So, I created an implementation of Conway's Game of Life using Scala and processing. So. So let me first show you the game. So Conway's Game of Life is based on a grid. And so there are cells, and I can just make a few alive. And then what happens is, once the game starts, they evolve over time. So while it's evolving, let me explain you how it works. So um, in, the, in the Game of Life, there are four rules. Uh, if there are uh, if there are two little neighbors of a cell, the cell dies of loneliness. Also, if there are too many neighbors, it dies of overcrowding. But when the uh, when the amount of neighbors are exactly right, uh, it uh, it stays alive and it can come alive. So I have an ob uh, object game of life here. So the init method all it does is it creates a two dimensional index sequence with all of the values set to false. And uh, all the rules in the game of life are based on how many live neighbors a cell has. So here I have a live neighbors count, which takes, uh, which takes the coordinate of the cell, the size of the grid, and the grid itself. So here I have a, a, a value, possible coordinates of neighbors. So what I'm doing here is, I'm, uh, each neighbor is gonna be, the x is gonna be either one more, one less or the same, and the y is also going to be one more, one less or the same. So I'm going over all these elements, and the if here is so that I don't count the cell itself as one of its neighbors. And what I'm actually doing, as, and as I go, I'm yielding the coordinates uh, to the list. And over here, what I'm doing is I'm filtering them so that I only get the ones that are in the grid, because if I have a cell right on the edge, these three cells won't be its neighbors because they're outside of the grid. So I have, uh, uh, so I'm checking that, and I'm checking that they're all alive, and then I'm getting this. One. So uh, let's look at the main part of Conway's Game of Life is uh, finding the next grid. So here I have a next grid method which takes the current grid. And then I have a value new grid. And the reason why I'm doing that is I can't do a for each and go over each element and change uh, the, uh, from, uh, if, from if they're dead or uh, to if they're dead or alive. Uh, because if this element changes, this, uh, uh, this cell depends on this cell. And then the whole thing goes crazy. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new empty grid. Uh, and as I go over the element, so I look at the element in the current grid, and then so let's say I uh, I uh, I figure out that it's going to be uh, it's, the cell is going to die. I set it to false in the other grid, so then it doesn't affect the current grid itself. And then I just return the new. Grid. So now let's look at how I uh, how I display the data. So I'm using processing, and in processing there are two main methods: the setup and the draw. So in the setup, I'm setting the frame rate, the size, and the background. And the draw, after the setup runs, the draw run, uh, keeps on running over and over again. So what I'm doing here is, if the game is started, um, I, I calculate the next grid, and then I just draw the grid. So here I have my draw grid method. So what I'm doing here is, I'm go uh, I have a four comprehension, so I'm going over each uh, cell. And if it's alive, I... I'm just drawing in my uh, my grid, uh, this uh, the square at my location. And at the beginning, I was drawing in a bunch of squares. So that happens in the mouse graph. So as long as the game has not started, I, I get the x and y, and then uh, I calculate the rounded coordinates because if I draw it at 65, I want to draw at 60 because each box is 10 pixels by 10 pixels. And then I'm actually using that uh, those rounded coordinates uh, to uh, so then I divide by the box thickness 
So that's the coordinates in my two-dimensional index sequence. So I set that to true, so that next time when I run the draw method, uh, the draw grid method gets a called, and then I draw the grid with the new element set to true. And then here I have a key press, me uh, key press method. So that just says that when I press the space bar, start the game. So um, there are a bunch of uh, uh, examples for on Wikipedia. So you can see them here. So I'll show you uh, a still life, the block, the blinker, and another pattern I found myself. So we can see that our program has uh, got into the oscillator. And so uh, first I'll just show you the still life. And the reason why it still is, this block has exactly three neighbors, so it stays alive. Same with the, all, all the other blocks, and this block has only two neighbors, so it doesn't come alive because it has uh, um, it, it's lonely. And here I have the blinker, which is just three in a row. And finally, the pattern that I found myself is 10 in a row. Which, this is actually an oscillator. And uh, maybe not this time. <laughs> what happened was it went out of the grid. And uh, in my program, it isn't on an infinite grid, which is how it's supposed to be. So once it, get, it goes off, I just forget about it. <laughs> so thank you. Any questions? Come on, ask me some questions. <laughs> How do you do the graphics? Huh? How do you do the graphics? Um, so I'm using a library called Processing. So, so that's what I'm doing. Any other questions? How do you build it? Um, I don't really know. I just run it in Eclipse. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah? Uh, can I learn to be as awesome as you? <laughs> do you more stop? <laughs> uh, can I just, I was curious, how old are you and when did you start uh, learning Scala? Um, I'm uh, 11 right now, and I started Scala when, um, last year, about. Thank you.